Let's go. Good evening. Welcome everybody around the country, around the world. Our prayer folks are coming in. We are going to be in the last message in the Sermon on the Mount. So uh, we're going to be in Matthew 7, 24 to the end of chapter 7. Got a couple of good hymns for you. Uh, and those are the easiest thing I can do. So uh, it's not like Sunday morning. I could do, we can do courses too, can't we? But I, I just, the hymns are just a lot easier for, for me. Glad y'all are here. It's awesome. We, if you weren't here during supper... We had uh, chicken pot pie. We had we had fresh corn and zucchini. We had uh, deviled eggs. We had uh, strawberries and cake, shortcake. So you should come on Wednesday night. We have a great time of fellowship. We eat very quickly. We have a group that prays at six o'clock. So if you want to come pray or come eat, that's that's a good time to do it. Amen. Mr. Renee's doing a great job. I'm so thankful for that. So we are, uh, y'all find him, let's see, 135. We're going to do 135 and 136. Y'all, if y'all hadn't noticed, I've been kind of stuck on the blood here in the last two or three weeks. And that's all right, isn't it? So uh, let's sing, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh. 
Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansions bright and be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white? snow are you washed in the blood of the lamb <laughs> i'm singing as fast as i can sing we were going to town boy <laughs> that's a good one isn't it that is so awesome all right well the the ladies will be joining us all of the ladies will be joining us here pretty soon uh, and we're going to have a big group in here. We're going to have a good time. So <clears throat> I want you to pray for me. I've just been trying to figure out what we're going to do when we got everybody in here. And, uh, and we'll, we'll see. I'll figure out something good and fun for us. And it'll be in the Bible. I know that. But we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll deal with that. So, man, those are some good old hymns, aren't they? Just good stuff. I like everything. But uh, it's easy for me to, to, to do those because... Kay's always busy, and I'm busy. We can't get together and practice, so that's just right off the cuff. And not everybody's as talented as I am that can do that, but <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. So. <laughs> All right, I'm so grateful y'all are tuning in, everybody by way of the Internet. And so uh, we're going to do some praying tonight and just thank God for everything that he's doing. Uh, your prayer lists are here. They're also on the, on the Internet, on the website. And many of you watching in who just catch the podcast, Mike has got us going around the world, man. I'll tell you, we have people in Bangladesh and Yemen and all over the world, man, that are watching in that podcast. And, and some, some of our clips have gotten uh, 3,000 views this week. So uh, we're, we're getting out there, and I'm just grateful. Man, Mike, thank you so much for doing that. You're a blessing to my heart, and I hope you all are enjoying these messages. And we get good comments, and we get bad comments. But we respond with, we love you, thank God for you, glad you listen. If you disagree with me, I'm just asking you to seek Jesus. He's the real deal. That's just all there is to it. And uh, so people that don't believe in God, people that, matter of fact, hate God, leave comments. But we're, we're always gracious and we say, hey, we love you. We want you to come to know Jesus. Just, just You just give him a try. Because you know, pastors saying is, I don't believe in atheists. I don't believe they exist. I believe they're lying, and I believe they're lying to their self more than anything else. Because I really believe the Scripture teaches that you know that you're separated from the God who created you. God puts that in you when you're born, and there's a, uh, a seed within you that needs to grow, and it's always reaching out and uh, it's seeking home. And I, you know, I understand that we come in the world totally depraved, can't save yourself you'll never seek after God but they know they know you cannot look at this world and this universe and at your body and not know there's a greater person who's designed it all and so test on Monday and uh, the guy that did it uh, was a, a, a doctor and he did this nerve test and uh, he asked me what I do for a living, so I told him. And he says, well, how'd you get in the ministry? And so I explained my call to him, and we went through all that. And I said, let me ask you a question. More importantly, are you a believer in Jesus Christ? He said, yes, I am. And we began to talk about design. 
And he said, the electrical current that runs through your body, it's a system. He says, you have an electrical system in your body that makes everything work. You have a plumbing system that's supposed to work right, but it probably doesn't most of the time. You have a circulatory system, and you have a, a pneumatic, I mean, you, you, your air, you have, um, you know, your lymph nodes and all of that are are connected to every there's this, this perfect design and I said, he said one of the questions I always get uh, we talk about how that impulse goes there so fast and makes your arm move all you got to do is think about picking up something and you do it because that impulse and the electricity runs and helps you do it he said the question I get most is but where did the first spark come from I said, well, that's a, good, that's a good way for you to start a conversation, to tell folks, I know the one, I know the big starter, and I know the one who created that. And so uh, I've been recently reading a, a book, is, uh, in the title of the book is, is All I Am Is My Brain. And this girl's a Christian. She was actually connected to uh, Robbie Zacharias's ministry before all the big blow up and stuff. But... Uh, She's a, a psychologist and a psychiatrist, and she's a researcher as well. And uh, within the book, she says that one of the things that bothered her the most was somebody died. They went in medical school, and they had it out, and the professor pulled out the, the, the brain and laid it over and said, this is Deborah. And he said, she said, I thought to myself, that's not Deborah. It's not all of Deborah something else and the quote that I'll that stuck with me through the entire book was she said neurons don't think people think you're more than just your brain you're a living soul Adam and Eve were created they had brains but then the scripture says God breathed life into them so it's a beautiful picture that God is here God's everywhere so that was exciting. I don't know who that was for, but hopefully they'll, they'll begin to understand there's a great designer. You know, everything. What do they, listen, what do they, they go on Mars, and they put the rover there, and Curiosity, what are they looking for? You want me to tell you what they're looking for? They're looking for something man-made. They're looking for something that has a right angle to it. See, if you look at something that's, ma that's made, then you know there has to be a maker. But they won't admit that right here on this planet, there's trillions and trillions of things that show us the maker. Just didn't get designed like that by accident, right? So you, <laughs> you're going, spending billions of dollars to go to another planet, you know, to find something that looks like it was been formed or fabricated that has a right angle to it. And you got the circulatory system right here in your body, but you can't figure that out. It was designed for a purpose. Amen? Okay, we've got some folks. Uh, Floyd had a little accident this afternoon. He's doing okay, uh, but he wanted to get checked out, so he went to the hospital, and we're waiting to, to hear uh, from, from that. John Holloway, our dear friend who has gone to Alabama now, and uh, John's just been having a terrible time, and so he's got pneumonia right now and has a UTI and some other things. We want to be praying for John. He's having a, a tough time. And then my sweetheart and uh, Miss uh, Sherry Minton. And so, you know, she had that ordeal. And so uh, with uh, the surgery for her knee and from that, she got on some medication. She had a hiatal hernia she didn't know about, and the medication kind of tore something in there and then she got infected and got sepsis and she ended up on the ventilator and they had to open her up to fix that and then they had to leave it open but she had to go back two days later have another surgery they still left her open and then a third surgery to close her up and finish it off and so uh, so I think she's been on and off the ventilator she's doing okay she's stable but anything like this at any time can kind of go south so we want to pray for Miss Sherry tonight Dana Yeah. Yeah. 
Floyd needs all the prayers he can get. If all the airbags deployed, you're going to be sore. Trust me, it's going to hurt. So, so we pray for our buddy. And so, uh, and Floyd's tough, by the way. So if Floyd's hurt, it's just tough. So, all right. So let's let's pray for those things. And uh, of course, always, uh, God's just been moving, and I'm so excited about our services and what's happening with our students and our children, and even in our, all our babies. What. Uh, and then we had a great day Sunday. Um, graduation is this week, so I'm grateful. So let's pray for these folks, and then let's get into the Word. Father, we love you. Lord, we also uh, think about uh, Brother Snooks tonight, too, as well. Snooks and Annette, um, some of our charter members, and I just pray for them as well, and Miss Sherry. Uh, Lord, I pray for perfect healing and for that and for Floyd and uh, for John Holloway. Uh, we love him, and uh, we... Uh, just as our folks have gotten older, we've just lost so many people, and I just pray for them and for their families, and I thank you for their support. I thank you that for many years they were here. Our senior adults just stemmed the tide. They were here, and uh, they, they gave so faithfully. And uh, Lord, in slim days where we paid the bills and did ministry and led our children to Christ, and so, Lord, I, I ask your blessings upon all of them tonight, and specifically in this. Thank you for getting JoJo feeling better. Uh, and, Lord, I want to pray for uh, Brian and the difficulties he's been having physically. Uh, and, Lord, we need him at full speed. And so I just pray for your perfect healing upon him. And then uh, uh, for our grandparents and others who are not doing well. And, uh, Lord, this... Uh, for Renee's grandparents and Mike's uh, grandparents and uh, moms and dads and all the folks, Lord, that just need a fresh touch from you tonight. We humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God and ask you to lift us up. And, uh, Lord, our missionaries are always constantly on our hearts. And thank you for the good reports I'm getting from the field. Um, Lord, thank you, God, that... Uh, even though it seems in these days that our convention is drifting, we're not, and we're going to stay with you no matter where they go. Uh, Lord, I pray for the events that we have planned. They're just things on the calendar without your spirit filling them. Uh, bless the ladies as they study tonight. Thank you for the prayer time that we've had. <clears throat> and bless us as we jump into your word tonight. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, Matthew chapter 7 verse 24 and then we're going to go to the end here uh, of this chapter I'm calling this there's a couple of uh, titles I've had and so the longer I preach I go back and hit these passages again I look at them from a little different angle but uh, the, the the message the title I like the best is brick and mortar for the soul so if you just build your heart up and you build your heart up spiritually uh, it, it'll, it'll help you get through life. And so one of the things that I've constantly, uh, as the young Christians, as they grow up, to teach them not to quit. And no matter what's going on in your life, you just hang in there and you just go. You don't quit, you just keep plowing. So the other title I, I like is uh, Building a Stormproof Life. And boy, and when the storms come, they're going to come. And as a Christian, we still love our God and we keep moving. So... Uh, what would you say if I were to ask you what were the most convicting words in the Bible? What would they be? Well, uh, I didn't say most important. I didn't say most meaningful, the most sentimental. But what do you think would be one of, if not the best, the most important or convicting words in all of the Scripture? What would you say that would be? Well, as I wrote that, I went through and I looked uh, very clearly, very closely at what I would, would think. And as I began to think about it, I uh, came up with a passage that for me in my heart convicted me more than anything else. And here's the passage, James 1.22. So there's a lot of other things that point blank nail or name or point out a specific sin. But I think overall this here, don't merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves, do what it says. If we just do what the scripture says, that covers everything. And so anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man that looks at his face in a mirror. And after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom, get that? Gives freedom. See, we're always looking for freedom, but the freedom's found in the scriptures. Uh, if you seek freedom, you'll put yourself in bondage. But if you put yourself in bondage to Christ, 
you'll get freedom. The man who looks intently into it will get freedom and continue to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. And so I'm interested in, <clears throat> I've often said this from the pulpit, if I could do what I know, I would be okay. Goodness, the things that I know about the Bible. Man, I mean, I've spent hours and hours and hours and hours. I'd be willing to bet that uh, not on a prideful or bragging point, but